Hey everybody. So as we continue our class on Tuesday, April 28th, um, at this point you have completed the geography part uh, looking at Plymouth, Massachusetts and the United States and hopefully you've been able to take those quizzes um, for each of the different regions, the Northeast, the Southeast, um, and, and you know all the other different sections of the United States. And now we're going to look at the story tonight that we're going to read. So tonight we're going to look at the new kind of library. Um, um, it is in your book from pages 95 to 96. I have a different version of it that's a little bit more complex that I'm going to read to you tonight. And then there are going to be some questions that I'm going to ask you to answer um, and submit those, those, those responses to me tonight as your, as your evening assignment. Um, after you finish that, I would encourage you to, to again, take advantage of these, these free online resources. I know we've spent some time in, pre in previous classes looking at the vocabulary, the virtual field trip, um, visit a museum, uh, practicing your math skills, whether it's fractions, percentages, uh, as well as looking at different um, pictures or photos from different uh, landmarks or famous places from around the world. So I'm going to start with this, and this is also a document that has been posted uh, and attached for you to read. Uh, again, if you want to look at the one from your book, you can. It's pages 95 to 96. This one's going to be a little bit more, um, more complex, uh, higher level. So you can kind of pick whichever whichever story um, is is best for you. So a new kind of library. Libraries have been around for thousands of years. The very first libraries were made in ancient times. These ancient libraries were owned by kings. Many years later, libraries could be found in other places. During these times, people led religious lives in places called monasteries and convents. These places had libraries. The books in those libraries were written by hand. They had pictures painted next to the words. Today, most cities in the United States have libraries. Most of these libraries have thousands of books in their collections. Some have even more books. People can take many of these books home to read. They have to bring these books back to the library when they're done. Libraries help people find information, so they need to change as the ways that people find information change. For example, People today use the internet to find information. This helps them find information much faster than by trying to look it up in books. So lots of libraries have started using computers to help people find information quickly and easily. One library that is using computers is the New York Public Library. This is the most famous library in New York City. It's over 100 years old. The main branch, or part, of the library first opened in 1911. At that time, it had over one million books in its collection. Since this library is so old, bringing new technology into the building can be hard. But the New York Public Library wants to use technology. So today, each building of the New York Public Library has computers. You can use the computers to go on the internet or to write. There are even free classes to help people learn how to use computers to do different things. At the New York Public Library, there is a room filled with people who are bringing in new technology. This place is called the NYPL Labs. A man named Ben runs this part of the library. He wants to help the library reach more people. Ben is in charge of projects that use a lot of people's help. These people don't have to work for the library, but they all work to help finish the projects quickly. One of these projects has to do with menus. The library has thousands of images of old menus. Years ago, people could only search these menus for information by looking at them one by one but the library wanted people to be able to search for information 
in the menus more easily. So the library had many people type out all the words on the menus. People could do this on the library's website. A lot of menus were quickly typed out by many people. Now, people can go to the library's website and use keywords to quickly search for information from the menus. In the past, only people in New York could use the New York Public Library. Now, anyone can search the library's books and information online. Thanks to computers and the internet, we have a new kind of library. So you can see from this story that the library has really changed over time as society has changed, as how people use the library has changed, what information um, individuals now need to get access to. Now that lots of people from around the world can access information in a library, you don't have to actually physically go to a library. And if you think about our class, our class used to be a class where you had to come to the library to be able to like learn, learn, improve English. And now our classes are online. So I wanted to just choose one word here that was in the story that's called ancient. So as far as, as ancient, it's an adjective, which means what? Yes, that's right. It's a word that describes a noun. And it starts to give us um, a definition and some examples. So if, if you could just read this section here. So ancient means very old from a long time ago. And then it gives us a sentence. Rome is an ancient city with many ancient buildings. Now, it's also going to give us a couple other extra definitions for the word and it's going to give us some examples here okay now ancient is a word that can also be used as a noun which is a person place thing or idea and it gives us the definitions here with an example of that word ancient being used as a noun and then down below it gives us these are some examples of how the word or forms of the word are used. So again, the word ancient is in bold. This gives us nine different examples here. So now what I'd like you to do as part of your written assignment tonight is this is going to get in. You can either type this or you can write this and take a picture of it and send it to me. Is tonight we're going to answer these questions. Now the first uh, the first five questions are all multiple choice. So you can just look at the question and you can just write the letter down for what you think the answer is. If you want to really practice your writing, write down the letter and the answer next to the letter. And if you're not sure of the question or of the possible choices, go back in the story and try and find where in the story it is helping you identify what the answer could what the answer could be okay so these first five and then we have a few more questions i'd like you to answer uh, number six is multiple choice number seven is a is the word that would go in the line here so blank the internet okay number eight nine ten and eleven are all questions that I would like you to answer that are not multiple choice. That means you're going to have to write incomplete sentences to be able to answer your question. So for example, it says, what is Ben Vershbo, who runs the NYPL labs, currently using the internet and crowdsourcing to do? So I'm looking for, you know, one to three sentence response for each one of these. And if you're not sure what it is, just leave it blank and move on to the next one. Okay. Now, one question that I don't want you to leave blank, where you should be able to to type the answer to this, uh, is going to be oops, number eleven. So number eleven is what is your talking to you now? What is your vision for the future of the Plymouth Public Library? What role do you see for the Plymouth Public Library in the future? So what that really means is, if you had to look 
in 10 years, in 20 years, in 30 years? What would be the role, the use, the purpose of the Plymouth Public Library or any public library? Because clearly a hundred years ago, it was a place where people had to go to find information through books, through printed resources. And then over time, as society has changed, libraries have had to uh, change and modify and do new things and stop doing some of the older things um, because it really became obsolete, no longer no longer required or no longer necessary. So if you could do that, and then this becomes the assignment that I'd like you to share with me with me tonight. Um, after you finish that, uh, as an option, that's the last part here, you can feel free to go back through those online resources and pick any one of these uh, different sections that you feel will help you improve your skills, make you, uh, make you a stronger student, and whether it's through math or whether or whether you're you know trying to develop your your English skills, whether it's speaking, reading, or writing. All right. Um, and again, if you have any questions during your scheduled class time, I will be available either through Google Voice or through um, or through email directly. All right. Well, good luck.